Hi, Dan Halsey here with United Designers with a little mind map for our Professional Practices Advanced Permaculture and Digital Design course coming up here soon. I just wanted to show you this mind map and with that many of the different facets of the course, what we'll be teaching. And uh, first of all, really to let you know that it's not just about Illustrator. Design has a lot of integrated processes and we are going to integrate the United Designers design process into the training for Adobe Illustrator. You can't have one without the other. You need to have some kind of design tool, but it needs to be informed by good site assessment and design practices. So we are going to spend quite a bit of time on the uh, design process and all the different facets of that and the chronology of site assessment all the way down to data mining and all the information that we need to find and how that is incorporated into our process on Adobe Illustrator. So let's open this up here. So we have five days of training of Adobe Illustrator. The first day is a basic tools, layers, software operation, also an introduction to the design process and the forms and things that we'll be using for that. So that first day is a big day, lots of information, a lot of things that we're going to be using. Uh, an introduction, like I said, to the class, pencil work, a little bit of practice and why it's different than pencil and how we still use pencil a lot when we're setting up to do our design work, uh, working in CAD and also in Illustrator. Uh, we really need to find out where we are when we're working on that. And there again, here we have site assessment. So this goes all the way back over to this side and we're integrating our site assessment to manage our design tasks and that process and that assessment informs our design. So it really goes back and forth. We want to be creative, we want to find solutions, but we need to have a lot of questions answered first to do that. So we have our eight page data table and then we have our 40 page assessment guide. And the difference between those two is that the data table is the ecological questions that we have, the physical, uh, earth sciences, the plants and all of that, uh, the biology about the place that we're working on the site specifically. And then the other assessment guide is really the social and the cultural context of where all that is, the human side, uh, the preferences of our client, and then all the different features of the land relative to the humanistic sort of influences that have been on it. So that's a pretty big day. We're going to get into that, talking about latitude, soil types, all those kinds of things, kind of refresher when we're talking about site assessment to find out where are we, where are we working, all those questions uh, when we need to work into that. So um, that's going to be uh, a pretty big day. Uh, we're working into that. And let's see, I'm going to close this up where we are. We have a presentation also about internet resources, where we find that. That is data mining also. But I have a presentation about all the different places we can find this information and what we're looking for. And then we get right into the Adobe Illustrator operations, creating a new document, setting up our workspace, the basic tools that we work with, saving the documents, all those rudimentary sort of practices that you're going to do hundreds, if not thousands of times but we want to do it right. We go through those because we don't want to just leave people out in the cold about some of those really important things. Uh, there's a big difference between save and save as and saving a copy and knowing how to use those tools and all the different menus makes a big difference on our efficiency and not screwing up our design in the process of trying to create these different pieces of information for our clients and for ourselves. We'll also work with the pen tool and all those different circles, squares, lines and shapes, what make up a design and we are working in vector so really it's just circle squares lines polygons and uh, all sorts of bubble type of things so we'll be working on that the first day get this back on here uh, the second day we're going right back into the tools again uh, and we're talking about color and we're going to talk about how we use these different symbols and what does it mean to create visual strategy to engage our clients it's very important uh, presentation that day about why these designs look this certain way. You've probably seen my style or with Rushka or Ben Missimer um, and other people that are using the Adobe Illustrator and the United Designers style. They have a certain look to them and we like to call it the easy read. So we're going to talk about what that formula is. What is that system, that palette that we use of colors? 
and then creating the artwork file, creating the title block, how we use these different files together. We actually have two different Illustrator files that we bring together to make, create our final design, and there's a reason that we do that. We have a lot of exercises that we'll do, so when we're doing presentations and we're talking about these processes, then we get on the computer and let's practice this. We'll do some case studies, and then we'll go right into building the base map. All the base map work will be supplied in templates. The layers will be there, and basically it's just us drawing on the screen and creating our base map from the initial information that we have to work from uh, in the template and other uh, files that will be supplied. So it's a, a lot of fun. The other thing that we'll do, we'll do is many times we have to create the base map from something that's scanned, or maybe somebody sends us a PDF, and there are different ways of doing that. Sometimes it's a DWG file from AutoCAD. You know, you really have to know how to work with all these different documents to create our language and to translate all those files into the kind of work that we do. Pencil concepts, digital graphics, we get into the symbols library. It's right away on that second day. Uh, key lists of plants, call outs, output, how to put it out to a PDF, what type of printing there might be. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, popping out here on a different day here. Sorry, so I'm going to close this up. We'll get to day three here. Uh, oh, and by the way, every morning it's questions. If you have questions about the process, what we're doing, and of course, any gaps in the learning or education that's being supplied, we want to know that. I want to know it. So that's where we get these questions asked and answered in our forum so that everybody can understand that, oh, there was this question, and maybe other people had that question too, or it hasn't come up yet. Sooner or later, those things do show up. We're also going to work with a little bit of Photoshop and tiling images. Many times we can't get high resolution images, so we have to work, do a little Photoshop magic to build them. And we can do that from Google Earth, Google Maps, a lot of different sources online uh, in order to create the kind of high definition images that we need for the background. Uh, we still use aerial images, even though sometimes we're working with surveys, but the aerial gives us so much information and we are visual people. We can see those patterns and it's important to have that in the background. Then we have some class exercises with building the base map and then also importing a DWG or a CAD file and how we separate and we translate these AutoCAD files into an Adobe Illustrator file that's basically in our language. So a little bit of technical work on there, but working with the symbol libraries, uh, pencil concepts and digital graphics on the third day. Again, lots of mileage, lots of repetition in these practices so that when you leave, you really have a good handle of doing the work. But you really have to work it. You really have to do the work in order to learn this quickly. So again, on the fourth day, questions and then building template layers. Layers that you are going to have for your work. We basically have our initial templates that I use for me and United Designers has, but then you need to make your own with your logo, your address, your information, and your style. That will be your vertical and your horizontal template. That's where your artwork will go into, and that's where you'll put all your notes and your list of plants and things like that. So we'll start building our template layer. Then we have a backyard exercise where we're going to use the plant symbols, place the plant symbols in a predetermined backyard base map, and then incorporate that back into our title block and see how these things work together in that common uh, scale, which you may or may not know. We work in 20 scale, one inch equals 20 feet, or in metric, it's one to 250. Those two are almost exactly the same, and we work in that scale all the time, and we can do that in Illustrator, no matter if you're at 160 acres or 1.6 acres. We always work in 20 scale because that's what all of our symbols are in. Then we'll go to the plant database. What fun. Go to the plant database, people will start putting in their data from data mining for the project that they're working on or where they are at home, soil types, climate information, all of that, and we'll learn how to use the plant database. From that plant database, of course, comes the information to make our symbols. So any symbol that's not uh, existing already in the library, we'll learn how to make those new symbols and add them to the library. We have hundreds now, and every time we work on a project, and hopefully every time our designers work on a project, we can keep adding these plants that people are using in the tropics and drylands, wherever it might be. So we always have lots of plants to choose from. And we have that, and again, in an order that everybody can use, no matter where you are in the world, using the scientific names, we keep everything open to everybody and accessible so you can use them in your design. And they're already scaled because we're all working in a common scale. So then we go to day five, and day five, you can see there's only a few things on here. Questions in the morning, 
and then using raster images to create elevation art. Most of our work is from the sky looking down, right? We're always looking overhead. Well, many times we need to make elevation art, which is sideways. You're not going to be using circles for that. And so we've found some great strategies for finding rastered art on the internet or images that you might have of trees, shrubs, whatever that plant is. And we can create really nice symbols, vector artwork from these plants and add those to our library. Pretty nice to have these things made. So as you're working with different grasses, different shrubs, we have plants that can basically, or symbols I should say, that represent those plants for us. And a lot of them are very similar looking, so it's just a matter of finding things that have a certain type of look as a shrub or a tree, one palm tree, a date palm tree, coconut palm, right? Very little changes between the two, but we can create that artwork and we can have that in our library to use later on. Really nice to, to learn and it's usable for many other things too. This day is a supervised work session, so as people are working on their projects or we need some extra time with specific tasks and specific skills within Illustrator or any of the other parts of the design process, we can take some time with that. We'll also get into the final design report on the last day. That's where we dissect the design. We take all sorts of little pieces of our design work, break it apart, bring it into uh, Microsoft Word or something like that, and with that, we start to write the narrative. And what's nice about that is we've already gone through the design process. We have all these things in our head. And let me tell you, a lot of times I'm just dictating it to uh, a Word document around that artwork that I've imported there. And I'm doing the narrative, talking about timing, talking about materials, what the purpose is of this area, all those kinds of things. Because we're doing a very nice design, 24 by 36 or A1 paper uh, in uh, Europe, or the rest of the world, I should say. And... Uh, but with that has to be some kind of documentation, not just the plant list, right? Not just supporting PDFs from research that we've done, but also the narrative that goes along with that to describe each one of the functional spaces that were on there or the activity nodes that are in our design. We need to describe all of those and the details because our clients need to understand a lot more of what's going on in those areas. Plus, they'll need to explain it to somebody else and now they have a document that can do that. So that's on day five. Now, one thing you're also going to get is the course package. So in the course folder, which will be on Dropbox, everybody will have their own private Dropbox folder where you'll put your work so I can check on it and we can share data and share information. That's where I'll put different uh, documents that I'm sharing with you. Uh, you'll have that on Dropbox. And so all that information will be supplied to you, plus the Dropbox access, access code for United Designers and the Natural Capital Plant Database Designer Access for professional use. And so those two things are included in the class. We've bought a year's worth of Natural Capital Plant Database Access. And if you already have a subscription to that, you know, of course, we'll just extend it out a year. Not an issue. Uh, if you're going to be here in Minnesota joining us for the class, and then, of course, we'll have all this documentation in a binder. And you'll have a hard copy along with um, the digital files that will be online. Uh, but they'll also have, of course, if you're here in Minnesota, access to a lot more resources with the library that we have, uh, working with the different software packages and working on different computers at the same time and using Southwoods as our outdoor lab to kind of talk about the different things that we're doing in the design. We have a lot of examples of that, too. There's also a drawing package. Things, information about that is that you either have to, you're, if you're not going to be here, of course, so you'll need tracing paper, grid paper, pencils, stencils, things like that uh, to help you with the pencil part of the class. Uh, for those people who are here the week before, they'll already have all of that because uh, we're doing the technical drawing class the week before we do the digital class. So make sure you just have the information uh, here and keep track of that for supplies you'll need. And most people have this already, these kinds of materials. So that's the Adobe Illustrator class that we're doing uh, for those five days. And then keep in mind that the design progression is part of that. We also have an on-site assessment process, basically a guide for the one, two, or five days that you're going to be on a site. And I really do myself. I'm a list person. I'm a mind map person. I have to have all this laid out so I remember everything I want to get done and the order of things and what the priorities are in doing that. So we'll talk about on-site site assessment. And then one of the main things now that it's new in ecological restoration is the standard key ecological attributes of where we're working. 
if there's any kind of ecological restoration that might be involved in the project, you really want to know what these are all about because these are from the Society for Ecological Restoration and they have great, great processes and questions which are part of our data table for data mining. They have a lot of great questions that generally we don't think about but they have already realized these are the tough questions to ask when you're doing ecological restoration for genetic material, species mixing, all those kinds of things. So right there is the Professional Practices in Advanced Permaculture Design class uh, that's coming up. I hope you can join us here or join us online. Uh, if you join us online, fantastic. And by the way, of course, these will be recorded and you'll have access to refresh your memory and go through all these presentations as many times as you'd like. They'll all be labeled and they'll also be much shorter than I'm talking now. I'm trying to keep them cut into little bite-sized pieces so they don't get to be 90 minutes, uh, which most of my presentations tend up being. But uh, I hope you can join us here in Minnesota or online. Looking forward to that and really bringing together this community with a common language and a common platform so we can bring permaculture up to this new level of professionalism all across the world. And when we do that, now we're all cooperatively working, we're working in teams, and we'll all be United Designers. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in the course.